84 years ago, in 1940, the Soviets murdered 22,000 Polish officers with a shot in the back of the head in the Katyn forests. Joined with me here today at the Katyn Cross at the Powązki Cemetery in Warsaw is Prime Minister of Estonia, Ms. Kaja Kalas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So you've just laid uh, flowers at the memorial dedicated to these victims of Soviet Russia. Why is this important to you? I think it's very important to remember those crimes and uh, we see that Russia's playbook hasn't changed. We see the same kind of uh, uh, atrocities happening in Ukraine and I think that it, uh, we have to remember so that uh, uh, we can also deal with the crimes that are happening uh, now and we can uh, you know, demand accountability for those crimes. There's a lot in common between Poland and Estonia. This goes also to history. Estonia has also been a victim of Soviet crimes. Is that true? Uh, yes, we lost a fifth of our population. So a lot of people were deported to Siberia. A lot of people killed, like uh, in Poland, our uh, elite, uh, political elite, also military officers, uh, cultural elite, uh, uh, economic elite. Uh, everybody was uh, was killed uh, when the occupation started. And uh, you know, the uh, I think after the Second World War, we had the Nuremberg Tribunal for the Nazi crimes, and so the Nazi crimes were widely condemned all across the world everybody knows and the German people got to know about the crimes that were committed uh, in their name uh, there was never a Moscow tribunal for the crimes uh, committed in uh, Katyn or uh, in, in uh, Ukraine or, or uh, Baltic countries and therefore we have to work on this accountability so that uh, these crimes don't happen again so in recent uh, years, your government has been successful in decommunizing the public sp sphere in Estonia. Poland has been doing this for years, too. Uh, but you've been placed on Russia's wanted list for this. Do you feel distinguished? <laughs> yes, I got a lot of congratulations for that. But, but actually, the message that Russia wants to hear from this is that they don't recognize Poland or Estonia as real countries because they put uh, us on the most wanted list because of the laws that are applicable in Russia, not in Estonia or not in Poland. And that is a message that they want to send. Does Estonia, like Poland, feel a real threat from Russia? Well, Polish uh, fighter jets are being scrambled every several days uh, because of Russian operations near the borders. Estonia is even closer to Russia, I could say. Is, uh, is the threat real there? We, uh, I mean, we are in NATO, and that's why we are not having the conventional war, uh, not in Poland, not in Estonia. But what we have uh, is a shadow war that is going on against our societies, hybrid attacks like using migration as a weapon uh, uh, towards uh, Poland or uh, intensive uh, cyber attacks against uh, Estonian, uh, uh, you know, different sites and, and our e-government uh, structures. So, uh, and information warfare that is going on everywhere to really undermine the trust in our societies. Uh, that we have to be aware of that is going uh, on in our societies. And what about Polish-Estonian relations? The two countries are on the eastern flank of NATO, they're part of the EU, but is there a special connection between these two states, now maybe especially? Uh, we have very good relations. We were just talking with Prime Minister Tusk uh, and uh, that we don't have disagreements. We are uh, very like-minded in very many issues, so we have had very good cooperation. Of course, Poland is, you know, the biggest country in the eastern flank, so we definitely look up to Poland also in, in uh, several aspects. Uh, and we really speak out that, you know, Poland would be uh, represented also uh, in, in uh, around the tables where the big countries are discussing issues. You've recently supported Mark Rutte's candidacy for the Secretary General of NATO. Do you not regret that it's not someone from the eastern flank of NATO who understands problems of Estonia, Poland? Of course, that uh, was our wish, uh, that it would be somebody uh, who is from the eastern flank, who invests uh, 2%, at least 2% uh, of their GDP uh, in defense, uh, giving a signal that uh, they take defense seriously and they take the situation seriously. But of course, uh, in alliances, we have to work on, on compromises that everybody has to agree to. You're also taking part in consultations today about uh, the EU strategic agenda. What can we expect on the strategic agenda for the next five years? 
We have different views uh, on this. Uh, for us, uh, of course, the question about security, uh, defence policies, uh, we have to have clear allocation of funds uh, for this because this is the crisis that we have. But also, second to that, uh, very important, the competition issues, how to be more competitive, I mean, as economy uh, in, in Europe. Uh, I think this is a very important point. Thank you very much for joining us, Prime Minister. This was Kaya Kalas, the Prime Minister of Estonia, who joined us here at the Cutting Cross at the Warsaw Powalski Cemetery. I give the floor back to the studio.